Alright, I'm Manslave, and this video is for the Validation Warfare YouTube channel. I want to make this quick because it's about 2.30 in the morning and I need to get some sleep. <coughs> Alright, uh, there's been some activity, there's been some uh, activity on my uh, YouTube channel. Um, and uh, it's about a video that I made a few days ago. Uh, a video to Rebecca Watson about the rape switch that I keep hearing about. <clears throat> and this uh, this person, well, I got two people that are uh, that are active on this whole uh, the, the comment section in this video. One is a gynocentric uh, bigot by the name of uh, Powerpuss Girl, who uh, gives me trouble sometime. Like one time, I made a video of, uh, to to Barbarossa, and Powerpuss Girl gets on there. I don't even know who this person is, but she gets on there and uh, says, oh, "Look at them beer tits," basically making you know the whole ad hominem kind of. Uh, attacks or whatever on me or, or you know just degrading my physical appearance and I told her it's like yeah it's like fling your shit and you'll uh, and you'll you'll uh, you'll start something I'll start uh, dealing with you but anyway <clears throat> um another person who apparently is uh, either a poop mouth or a gynocentric bigot uh goes by the uh Username of Sadie Heidelman, uh, Hei, uh, Heilman. Anyway, uh, and uh, I don't even know who that is, but anyway, uh, she seems to not understand me very well, and seems to have some misunderstandings of um, what I represent. You gotta understand, I regard myself as elite MIGTO. All right, and you need to understand what that is. I'm not, I'm not in the men's rights movement. I'm sympathetic to the causes of the men's rights movement, uh, <clears throat> and uh, MIGTO, you know, men going their own way, describes me. But I like to think of myself as uh, elite, uh, elite MIGTO. You know, uh, a much more intense version of it. Um, just. Okay, Sadie, you need to understand who I am and what I do. And my background. Okay, for most of my life, I've put women up on a pedestal to admire. Okay, I believed all the propaganda bullshit that they were superior to men. And I bought into that for so long, and regardless of how I was treated... And I need to find that freaking note. Um, I got this love letter note. And I uh, <clears throat> can't make this video too long. Because my camera only has about half an hour time limit on it. Uh, I got a copy of it in here. Uh, this will just get into it a little bit. And uh, since you don't have a clue, obviously. Alright. Okay. Oh, here it is. Well, here is a copy of it right here. Um, here's a copy of it. That print out covered up my uh, real name because you know I don't need to know your real name. You don't need to know mine. Uh, you know. But here it is, the actual hand printed physical note from May 29th, 1998, and it says. Well, it has my name on there, <clears throat> on the top, and it says, The first time I saw you, I couldn't take my eyes off you. Didn't you notice? Now when I see you, I, I have to turn away because I think naughty thoughts. But when I look at you, it makes me... It looks like it says hard. It looks... It's, it's in... It's in cursive, but there's the word right there. Uh, uh, think naughty thoughts... Uh, no, and like it makes me hard, and I tend to grab myself. Hope to see you undressed soon. Love, 
Miranda. Alright. I got this note when I was 18 years old. And I used to be basically, I didn't really understand it at the time, but I was mistreated by uh, women and females and all that. You know, I'd go to my friend's house for a band practice and, you know, his his mom would be <clears throat> a real prankster and she'd be talking to her sister or one of her female friends on the phone and then she would pretend that these people knew that I was there and that they wanted to call and talk to me. Really, she's just sitting in there in the, you know, on the couch or whatever talking to her sister or whatever and says, hey, you know, so-and-so is here. Hey, you want to, like, talk to him or whatever, like, and just whatever. Anyway, so then they would hand me the phone, and then it would basically be some woman or whatever who would pretend to be interested in me, and then she would talk just all perverted and stuff and exploit my gullibility, okay, because I was a nice guy for the first 30-some-odd years of my life. Uh, for the first 31 years of my life now, my 32nd year of my life, uh, no, no, nice guy is an insult to me, uh, those are most, um, um, the, the, those words are very insulting to me because I know what it really means. Okay, we gotta get into female nature here, and I don't got a whole lot of time on this video, and I need to go to bed anyway, but you need to understand female nature, okay, Sadie? And, uh, Power Puss Girl, you need to go fucking pet some, alright? Uh, you, you got a problem with me, which is totally cool. We can go back and forth, dude. It's totally great, as long as it's just words. Uh, don't block or ban me, especially if you don't want to be blocked or banned, okay? I'm not weak-minded and pathetic and stupid like a bunch of you feminists out there. Uh, who can't seem to take any criticism at all, uh, who can't seem to tolerate any kind of shit flung back at you, but you sure can't fucking fling it. You know what I'm saying? And this is pathetic. And this is why your gender is not very trustworthy. Uh, Anita Sarkeesian is another fucking gynocentric bigot. And, oh, the trolls are after me. The trolls. I'm so weak and pathetic because I'm bullying man. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, as Girl Writes What says, she's got some big girl panties for you, okay? Um, now, okay, these, these, okay, generalization, okay, let's get on generalization. Really? You had to go there? Okay? Do you know what I'm about to say to you? Because of your fucking retardation? Alright? Um, yeah. What about all this fucking bullshit that I had to hear about for the last 20 years of my life about how men are just inherently stalker, rapist, abusive assholes? Yeah, looking at the fucking rape statistics, 19 trillion out of every six women are raped every second and every minute of the day. Now that is an exaggeration, okay, what I just said, but it, it gets to the point. Um. Yeah, one in four women are raped, okay. So one in four women are raped in their lifetime, okay. And of those women that are raped, uh, you know, uh, so many um, percent of them experience it on a regular basis and all that. Well, like, if you really look into it, it's a tiny fraction. And then you look at all the other stuff. What gets lumped into abuse. Okay, yeah, ignoring and, and financial um, abuse is another one of them. Why? Because some guy doesn't want to fucking give her his paycheck all the time? The fuck? I mean, where's all this strong and independent bullshit, you know, th th that I had to hear about for two damn decades? Okay, and you got to understand why I'm pissed. Because 20 years of being nice to girls and, and being... Just being myself, nice, submissive, which I actually schooled myself on how to be an asshole because that's apparently what your gender really wants. I mean, you know, you got all this dignity shit going on. Your gender does. Okay? And I say your gender because there's a lot of them. I mean, okay, if, if so many men are assholes, you know, I hear this all the time. 
Well, all men are assholes and mine, and, and sometimes they'll, they'll put on a show and, and, and make you think that they're, that they're, that, that they love you in their heart, but, but they really don't. Man. Yeah, that's the fucking shit I've had to hear for years. Ever since at least my preteens, okay? You know, and I've had to hear this stuff for years. Hey, let's pull up something. Here, let's open a new tab. Well, yep, we're, uh, we're just going to open a new YouTube tab here. And let's go to something that had to just destroy my whole self-esteem ever since I was about 10 years old. Okay, sexual, oh, let's see, old sex. Old sexual harassment p uh, public service announcement. Yeah. All right, here we go. Watch this. Hey, how can you tell when a woman means business? Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> this is closing. I'm gonna be in Oh, we know what you need, honey. Sexual harassment makes you feel like less of a person. For health and hotlines, read the top sexual harassment booklet at your library. Uh, it was only a joke. No, it's been going on too long. It's called sexual harassment, and it has to stop. Sexual harassment violates you, and it violates the law. Alright, ever since I was a kid, okay, about 10 years old, you know, I started noticing this stuff in 1990. On TV, it was big, oh, they act like it's a pandemic of men sexually harassing women. All this shit. You know, I've seen this public service announcement when I was a kid. I didn't understand what it meant. Okay, this is kind of right before I started taking interest in girls. Okay, and I so I see a man, inter, you know, interacting and having dialogue with a woman, and I didn't understand really what was being said. Keep in mind, I was about ten years old. Okay, it, it, the guy looked like he was having a good time. Of course, I was a kid. You know, you could read facial expressions then. He looked like he's just laughing and having fun. And then, and then, in this when I was a kid, and then it appeared that the woman just got fussy all of a sudden for no legitimate reason. You know, he, the guy's laughing and all that. She gets all pissed and says, sexual harassment. Okay? Now, I didn't understand what this meant, but like, it, it like freaking warped my perception. And it made me afraid of girls ever since. That's one of the things. Uh, I didn't go on my first date till I was 30 years old. Two weeks after my 30th birthday, uh, as a matter of fact. Uh, I always had this phobia of pursuing girls because of, well, you know, various other reasons. Basically, I was too timid and I was uh, very, very shy and submissive. Uh, and contrary to what your gender stereotypes my gender for and generalizes, no, actually, me and my colleague, the disposable human doing, we are not afraid of rejection. We actually welcome it. First of all, because we're stronger people than your gender, okay? Uh, because we know your gender really hates rejection, and we know this from personal experience, uh, because it's a crushing blow to your gender's self-esteem, really to anybody's. But, no, the reason why we welcome uh, rejection is because we know what our bounds are. We know, we know what our safe bounds are. We, we know what is acceptable and what's not. If a girl says, uh, no, I'm not interested, that's fine. At least we know. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no, no. What I got a problem with is this fucking bullshit that women do. Where And I've noticed it. I've studied by, by attribute. Because I, I noticed that, that what women say and what women do oftentimes do not match up. <clears throat> okay, now, okay, they say they want a nice guy. And when a nice guy comes along, no, they friends on him. They reject him and they friends on him. Okay, because he's not attractive or has a big bank account. Okay, or he's not that, he's not that bad boy that can protect me. Man. Yeah, okay, that's another problem. Now, how about this one? Okay, what I personally hate, and this has happened so many times, I get so pissed off when this happens is when a girl flirts with me will persistently do it will not stop and then finally when I break down and take interest in her because I think that she's taking interest in me and I'll explain how it works me and my colleague the disposable human doing when we see a girl give us certain types of attention the types of attention that we would give a girl if we were interested we interpret it as flirting and personal interest, okay? Now, 
when we see females give us the type of attention that we would give them if we were personally interested in them, we interpret that as personal interest and all that because that's the way we do it, okay? Well, I hate it when a girl flirts and, and just persistently goes about it and will not stop and then causes you to get, you know, well, in this case me, to get interested in her and then, so, so then I'm attracted to her, I, I become interested in her, and then I try to pursue her, you know, and usually I'm really timid and, and just even make vague references of interest or whatever, at least I try uh, to be very cautious about it. Well, then she finds out, and then first, the very first thing that happens is a, is a self-esteem boost uh, because it's proof of marketability. Um, <clears throat> that a person can get interested, can, you know, that this person's marketable, they're dateable, they're, they're you know, pe it's proof that, that people can be interested in them. Well, they get their self-esteem boost, their ego boost, and they start feeling all good, okay, they got what's important to them, what feels good, but they're not really interested in me for whatever reason, okay? What they need to do is just straight up say no. It's like, no, I'm not interested, sorry. That's what they need to say, but that's what they usually don't do. What they usually do is, then they act like it's a big fucking problem. Oh, I'm afraid I'm gonna do something. I wish I would do something. I wish you would leave me alone. Mama! You know, and it doesn't just happen to me. It happens to a lot of people. I mean, it's a fucking dignity struggle. I mean, come to grips with what it really is. I mean, like, really. I mean... Just, she'll turn down that nice guy and go with a fucking asshole or, or some guy that she has a problem that, that sh the guy who she'll regret next or whatever but you know what I, you know I used to hate men so bad for years As a matter of fact for almost for decades okay it's been about almost 20 years but anyway uh, for at least a full decade uh, and I really actually did believe that men were the problems in society but I started to notice like wait something's not right here something didn't add up because all this negative all, all this negativity all these negative things that that, um, that uh, women often stereotype men for being I started noticing that a lot of women actually behave in the negative way that they stereotype uh, and generalize men for acting uh, for example, um, having commitment issues. Uh, no, that's women's hypergamy in full swing. Uh, that's why if you ever listen to any Beyonce, she's got that song, <coughs> uh, Irreplaceable, you know, uh, to the left, to the left, uh, everything you own to in the box to the left, in the closet, that's my stuff, yes, if I bought it, please don't touch, and keep talking that mess, that's fine, could you walk and talk at the same time? And that's my name that's on that jag. Quick move your bags. Let me call you a cab. Standing in the front yard telling me how I'm such a fool. Telling me how I'm never going to find a man like you. You got me to say, you must not know about me. You must not know about me. I can have another of you in a minute. Matter of fact, he'll be here in a minute. Uh, baby, you must not know about me. You must not know about me. Don't you ever get to thinking that you're irreplaceable. So go on, get lost. Call up that chick and see if she's home. Oops, I bet you thought that I didn't know. What did you think I was putting you out for? Because you wasn't true, hauling her around in the car that I bought you. Baby, drop them keys. Uh, hurry up before your taxi leaves, and just on and on. And, uh, and then she basically in intimidates the guy in her song. You know, don't you ever get to thinking that you're irreplaceable. Um, yeah, just flaunting that. And you got, go listen to some Kelly Clarkson, uh, some Beyonce, even Carrie Underwood. Oh, how about her man singing, or uh, man hating song? I mean, she doesn't even, like, in her song, she offers speculation and no actual evidence. She's not like, well, I went out in the parking lot and I saw him cheating and, and it hurt my feelings really bad. No, it's just, you know, right now, he's probably, you know, uh, out with some bleach blonde tramp uh, showing how to swing a combo. Right now, he's, you know, he's probably doing this. It's clearly speculation. Uh, but, but in the song, she mentions that I'm not saying that she did this in real life I'm just saying the way her song is structured uh, lyrically uh, and what things mean but then in the song she says I dug my keys into the side of his pretty little souped up four wheel drive carved my name into his leather seats I took a Louisville slugger to both headlights slashed a hole in all four tires 
Uh, maybe next time he'll he'll think before he cheats. Exactly. Exit strategy is what that is. Uh, oftentimes, what women do is they're they're losing interest in a guy. Uh, they look for a dignified exit strategy. Uh, infidelity is usually it, but you know, it, so much of the time it's the pot calling the kettle black. Uh, women project a whole lot, and I've noticed this. I mean, most guys think of rape as something, well, it's unthinkable. It, it's something horrifying, terrifying, disgusting. That's why so many men, you know, talk about how much they just love to murder, like, rapists or whatever. And a lot of people don't like rapists and all that. Okay, but yet we gotta hear the fucking rape switch and all this kind of stuff. And, um, and, you know, and, 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 oh my gosh. And see, you know, on another, on another topic of rape, you know, I'm not going to make rape jokes, okay? I think that's just really in, in bad taste. And, now, I'm totally for freedom of speech of guys who make rape jokes, because after all, you know, your gender, uh, the female gender often says, don't drop the soap, motherfucker. And I'm, you know, I'm sick of that shit. No, you know what? If rape's bad, then it should not happen to anybody, okay? Okay, me and my colleague, uh, the, the uh, disposable human doing, we acknowledge that rape is bad. Okay, but at the same time, we've got to ask. If rape is so bad, then why is it so fucking comical when it happens to men in prison? You know, what about that insensitivity? All I'm calling for is that the double standard be abolished, okay? If there was no double standard, there would not be a problem. But I tell you what, your gender has got some shit to come to grips to, okay? And you need to get a clue on what motivates me. You do not know the depths of where I have been. You do not know where I have been, okay? You don't even got a clue, okay? You do not know what has happened to me in the past three years of my life. You do not know what motivates me. I found out that no matter how good you treat a girl, they will fucking shit on you. And it didn't just happen to me. It happened to my colleague, the disposable human doing. It happened to a bunch of my friends. It happens to celebrities. It happens to all kind of people. Look at the shit with fucking poop mouth dumbass Kristen Stewart and the shit she did to Robert Pattinson. Oh, he's caught in the backseat of a vehicle with a friend of his, a female friend of his, holding hands. Oh, and that's cheating and she makes a big fucking deal out of it. And it's all horrible and it's a, and, oh, I'm such a victim. He hurt my heart. Man, what she do? Cheats on that guy twice. Was it revenge? Or, or, why did she do it? Maybe it was her hypergamous female nature. You know, always trying to get the better deal. you got to understand evolutionary psychology. And look at, look at why women choose these brutes that are just so tough and, and the, the whole violent, domineering type of man because she believes, well, it gets into the whole, you know, what man can defend her from another it goes back to this caveman stuff, you know what I'm saying? And you really need to understand what is all going on. And, and feminists are so, so petty and so superficial. They are very, very shallow. i got to check the time on this camera. And uh, see how much time i got left. Alright, i got about five minutes. Alright, I need to wrap this up. And we are not finished. Uh, we can talk quite a bit. Uh, hey, you don't ban my shit and I won't ban yours, okay? Matter of fact, on a couple occasions, I took some messages that YouTube automatically marked as spam. I guess, according to their filters or whatever, they're assuming that certain people don't want to hear whatever. People posted on my, uh, my YouTube channel, the Validation Warfare YouTube channel, and, like, YouTube, I guess, automatically thinks it's spam or whatever. Well, I checked not spam on there several times for what people comment. Now, like, it's my channel. I can say whatever I want, and it doesn't regard what I say as spam. But for anybody else that comments, uh, a bunch of feminists and other people, I, I, I don't know why it regards your comments, you know, your people's comments on my channel as spam. I don't know why. But I keep clicking not spam so that comments can be visible so I can read them. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm not like the fucking feminist ascension, the, the, the feminist ascension dumbass 
uh, on Facebook, they'll fucking block everybody she doesn't even agree with and all that. Or how about the Anita Sarkeesian? Whoa, take the money and run. Yeah, yeah, well, with the 160K she ran off with uh, for a Tropes vs. Women uh, uh, Kickstarter project or whatever. And just, just to let you know, I like her videos. Uh, Anita Sarkeesian, the person that does Feminist Frequency. And, you know, because I, I like video games and I like movies, so it's like, yeah, cool, play video games and, and do reviews on them and movies and all that. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. And, yeah, I don't like a bunch of those testosterone-pumped games. Some of them are kind of cool, but, you know, uh, I like playing uh, strategy games sometimes. Uh, a little bit of puzzle, a little bit of role-playing elements. Um, you know, and a lot of the games I play are not exactly testosterone junked or whatever. Um, and so, you know, I kind of relate to her on some of the subject matter, but then she comes out with all this fucking dumbassery and all these dumb, stupid conspiracy theories about how everything in everything degrades women. And she's just a... Anita Sarkeesian is such a, a bigot. She's such a a conspiracy theorist and she really is is just an overall summarization of what feminism really is why does it even have to be called feminism if it's really for equality why why can't it just be called like humanism or equalityism or like whatever I mean okay if, if you're looking for equal rights for all people then why does it have to be called feminism, like, denoting that it, like, takes side with feminine, which is female? I mean, why? And matter of fact, you know what? Uh, the men's rights movement will probably succeed in implementing equality where feminism has failed, because they come up with these conspiracy... You know, feminism comes up with these conspiracy theory theories that men are privileged and all that. Well, like, damn, I mean... Oh, like voting. Hey, let's get there on voting, okay? 19, uh, let's see, about, about 96 years ago. i got to check the time on this camera again. Okay, I've got about one minute. All right, this is another thing that motivates me. Uh, the double standard is just horrifying, okay, and how it makes a person feel. Uh, okay, World War One. about 96 years ago. 96 years ago, okay. All right, what was my gender doing? My gender didn't even want to go to war, necessarily, okay? Well, my gender was shamed into going over to fight in Europe uh, by the white feather campaigns done by your female gender, okay? White feather campaigns of shaming for any man uh, above the age of 17 who was not in military uniform, okay? And the male gender was being shot a piece by machine gun fire, blown a piece by artillery fire, burned to a crisp by or burned to death by flamethrowers, uh, let's see, cut up, uh, mangled up by barbed wire, uh, gassed to death by mustard gas and all this kind of other stuff. And, and, and what was your gender doing? What was female gender doing? Oh, back home in safety bitching about voting rights when a bunch of the guys on the battlefield didn't even have the right to vote because first of all they were under 18, they were underage, and uh, as some of the laws in England were, it was still about class and status. I mean, you act like men have always had the right to vote throughout thousands of years of history. And i got to check the time again. Uh, no, no. Like, most men did not have the right to vote throughout history. It only became in the last 200 years or so that men had the right to vote for the most part. I mean, uh, anyway, this time's going to run out of this camera. Until next time, I'm Manslave, and this is the Validation Warfare YouTube channel. You need to go pet some.